Case number eight. Hip mass in an 80-year-old man that's painful. Here's skin up here. And we're down in subcutis. And then way down below that, at the bottom of the subcutis, we got something that's kind of replacing and filling in the space where the fat used to be. So that does have fat and trap right in the middle of this yeah. lesion. So quite, quite uh, worrisome because it looks like it's being replaced. The fat is being replaced by spindle cells. But let me point out, what does this look like? but with big nucleoli, and yeah. they look just like those ganglion-like cells in the last case. And look at the background cells, myofibroblasts with purple cytoplasm and spindle to stellate look. See like how that guy's kind of a triangle shape? That's what stellate is, kind of triangle-shaped oh, yeah. cells. Even though stellate means star-shaped, mm -hmm. they never have like a five-point star. They're always like kind of three-pointed triangles. But that is that pattern, that growth pattern, purple cytoplasm, triangle shape, very characteristic of myofibroblasts. Oh. And we've got background myxoid change and we've got extravasated red cells. If I took those big cells out and, and just showed you this, this looks like nodular fasciitis. Take away the big, the big ganglion-like cells, this is another form of fasciitis. Very scary, right? It looks like it's infiltrative and replacing the fat. But this is one where we've got stuff at that periphery that looks like fasciitis. We'll come back to the fat involvement in a minute. But then when we go to the center of it, look what something different happens here. In the very middle, we've got a zone that's not bluish and mixoid anymore, but red. And when we go closer, it's all dead. It's necrosis. Mm -hmm. It's necrosis that kind of all the tissue's dead, but it also looks kind of like fibrin. So what we call this is fibrinoid necrosis. It's, it's like kind of, I think of it as a necrosis where there's been extra blood bleeding into it, or it looks like that. So it has that bright red color of fibrin, but it's all dead. So it's this kind of fibrin necrosis overlap. So this lesion, I wish I could show even lower power because the key to recognizing it, aside from the clinical history, which is important, is the fact that it's zones. It has a central zone of fibrinoid necrosis. Then the periphery around that zone looks kind of like fasciitis, has kind of a nodular fasciitis myofibroblast with a myxoidy background look. And then as you get out to the periphery, depending on the age of the lesion, that stuff will begin to kind of mature and turn into scar tissue. We're kind of seeing that happen here. The fasciitis is kind of starting to organize and actually making like more fibrous kind of scar tissue like right here. See, it doesn't look as loose and mixoid and granulation tissue like anymore. It's now starting to kind of look scar like. And you'll often see kind of proliferating blood vessels out in that area around the outside too. So that yeah, like right there, that looks like granulation tissue. See, it's kind of like that proliferative revved up vessels and reactive myofibroblasts that you'd see in granulation tissue. So the zone of ischemic ischemic type fibrinoid necrosis in the middle surrounded by fasciitis and granulation tissue surrounded by scar that is um, typical of ischemic fasciitis that's what this is ischemic fasciitis it is totally benign well it is not malignant but i mean it is a problem when people get this it's often it kind of is a similar process to decubitus ulcer okay and the other name for this is called atypical decubital fibroplasia which basically is it's a reactive fasciitis-like change that occurs in the setting of chronic pressure, just like the cubitus ulcer, often in older patients that are bed bound over bony prominences like the sacrum, the hips, sometimes the shoulder, the elbow. I've seen it occasionally in those places where the bony prominence is pushed down for hours and hours on end from someone who's confined to a wheelchair or a bed or something like that. So oftentimes that's the, the finding. And the idea is that that pressure pushes the blood out of the tissue and causes ischemia, and eventually the tissue dies. And what you get is the fibrinoid necrosis from the ischemia. Then the response around the edge of it is all reactive, reparative, fasciitis-like reactive myofibroblasts and granulation tissue and scars trying to kind of repair around that central zone of dead tissue. That's the way I kind of conceptualize it. It's all this. This is the ischemic center, and all the stuff around it is kind of reacting to it. So the, the thing is to recognize that zonal pattern which is if you have a small biopsy, you may not be able to see this and it can be quite challenging. But if they go in and take enough tissue out, you can see this ischemia and fibrinoid necrosis and then that zone of fasciitis like stuff and granulation tissue like stuff around the edge. And it sometimes has ganglion like cells, just like you can see in proliferative myositis, proliferative fasciitis. There they are right there. Those are the ganglion like cells again. 
and the fat is just kind of caught up in the middle of it. But you're right, the appearance is very much like what you would see in, um, you, you can think about a tumor that's got fat, like a, like a liposarcoma, well diff liposarcoma with myxoid change or atypical lipomatous tumor. Certainly, you could think of that. You could also think of like a myxoid looking DFSP at low power, although the cells here are much bigger and more plump. DFSP uses very thin, stretched out cells, kind of neural looking, not these big plump uh, myofibroblasts. So that is, that's one thing that would help you there. And also if you did CD34, usually much of the lesion except for the vessels will be CD34 negative most of the time. And these areas here, these are actually look really scary, but there are some ganglion-like cells intermingled with really juicy revved up endothelial cells. See, they're starting to make new vessels, just like the vessels in really robust granulation tissue. So that can look really scary. So again, this is a good reason Whenever you have a biopsy site or something that's really revved up and you know that it's benign and reactive granulation tissue, study that and get used to when you, when you know it's granulation tissue, study it closely and you'll get used to just how weird myofibroblasts and vessels can look when they're reactive because otherwise it's really scary. So these can be large and so clinically they can, they can be concerned that this is going to be a sarcoma, especially if they don't actually have it, a cubitus ulcer over it. It's just a mass underneath. So the surgeons will often be worried that this is a growing mass and they'll think because it can be kind of large, they will often be concerned that it's a sarcoma. So this is one of those times it's scary looking microscopically and then clinically their concern is for malignancy. So you can, it can kind of lead to a, um, it feels like there's a clinical pathologic correlation, but it's, it's both sides are wrong, right? It clinically looks more scary than it is and microscopically. So that is called ischemic fasciitis. And again, recognizing the loose myxoid fasciitis like stuff in the background, that pattern is what really helps me a lot in addition to the zonal, the zonal pattern. And uh, here's another area that's kind of really scary looking. This is just really revved up vessels. Look at that. I mean, it's got a mitosis. I mean, that looks very, if you just took a high power picture of that, I mean, anyone would be terrified. You'd think, oh, that's bad. But when you put this kind of reactive vessels and myofibroblasts in the context of the background stuff that all looks like fasciitis and this is totally fine so when we go up to lower power that's just the focus but i've shown this slide to many uh, residents and students over the years and usually people think it's malignant they usually think it's either liposarcoma or dfsp or myxofibrosarcoma uh, many of my fellows i've shown I've, I've had a lot of people i've been able to trick with it because it's a very robust and scary example but that's the kind of stuff we want to see and uh in our in our training right we want to see stuff and and struggle with it and get it wrong so then we remember it in the future because uh yeah that's pretty wild looking right so ischemic fasciitis really really characteristic great example